Well, everybody, we promised you something big and hot and DC-related off the back of the Batman. So what we're delving into uh, for the next four weeks on Caravan of Garbage is something that we like to refer to as the DC Graveyard. What's that, Mason? It's bad DC movies. Yeah. 90s, early 2000s. We did steal, so we've, we've done oh, that that's one. true, yeah. Also, I should point out that... This isn't like a DC exclusive thing. I'm sure a lot of people will be like, well, actually, Marvel made a bad movie. Did you see? They've made a bad... Yeah, we know. We know. We saw Nick Fury. We yeah. talked about it. We did all the Fantastic Four movies. We yeah. know. But yeah. Get off our backs. Uh, but there's definitely more that we could get to. Yeah. Uh, leave a like if you could, because uh, it's kicking things off with uh, Catwoman 2004. And do you know why I consider this movie a seminal movie for both of us, Mason? Oh, I, I know why, but explain, please. <laughs> so... People might not know this unless they listen to our podcast, The Weekly Planet. But between the years, uh, probably about 2002 to 2010, we saw literally every movie. Every movie that came out of the cinemas. Were we like, saw Paycheck. Yeah. We saw the movie. Payback. Mo- Payback. I think that was before. That was before. That's a pretty good movie. We saw the movie Gabriel, which, oh, we, were, yeah. which we were talking about just before. Oh my God, Austra- <laughs> the Australian made weird angelic Matrix ripoff <laughs> Gabriel. Yes, please. Uh, but the one movie that I remember you specifically putting your foot down on was Catwoman. You might say that movie gave me pause. Little cat pause. That's very good. <laughs> so that's fun actually to visit this for the first time. Uh, had you seen this before? I had not seen it before. No, I did. Wow. It, rem- this has remained untouched. This is a real. Yeah. This is a real. Uh, what a moment in time, and not a good one. No. But um, <laughs> it's a real. It's a real archaeological dig, which fits because there's a big long opening <laughs> sequence, a title sequence, where it's yeah. like cats in history. What are they about? Do they know stuff? Magical stuff? Let's find out. At least one of them knows some stuff. Magical stuff? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Would you like a bit of background though, in terms of how we got to this movie? Yes, please. This is a bit of a fantastic tale. Uh, Excuse the pun. This actually started as a Tim Burton spin-off, which he was going to direct. Just a spin-off of Tim Burton's life? That's right, That's exactly. Wow. Exactly. Little red. He had too many cat women in his life, and he wanted to get them onto the big screen. What actually happened is he was supposed to do a version of Batman Forever. He had mm. his own version, which he ended up leaving, and Keaton left. It's a whole thing. i got a video on it. But the same day that Batman Forever was released... He turned in his script for this. Sorry, not this. His version of oh, this. Oh, I see. Yes, right. With Michelle Pfeiffer. Which would have been spookier, I imagine. Exactly. And mm. the studio were like, this is not the direction that we're going. And no, fuck off. Mm. Actually, do Superman for us, please. But fuck off with this. You know what? Fuck off with Superman as well. <laughs> You're not doing anything. Uh, so Michelle Pfeiffer actually also had the option to return ah. and declined this role multiple times, including the no, l- no, <laughs> no, no. Do I have to have children to have a reason to say no to this? Can I just not say no? Well, I'm having some kids. That actually, Bye, that yeah. actually did happen. Yeah. So it ended up in 2001. Ashley Judd came on board, oh. which I think would have been great. Uh, Nicole Kidman was also considered, who was, of course, in Batman Forever. Warner Brothers actually then ended up cancelling a version of Batman v Superman in 2004. We actually have an animation of that by uh, the wonderful Sean Willits, if people want to check that out. It's really cool. And Warner Brothers were like, we need something before Batman begins. We have nothing. What if... We set a Catwoman movie in an entirely CGI city for no reason. Yeah. Just, it's all CGI. But also, yes. it's a Tim Burton Batman spin-off because there's a picture of Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman there is, in yeah. this movie. So technically, this is, well, until The Flash, the last time we saw the Burton DC universe. Mm-hmm. But it was in, it was on TV. Shut up, I didn't watch it. Oh, but I know it was on TV. <laughs> anyway, so the director of this, Patov, said... Uh, this Just is, the one name. Well, like he's, Madonna. He's, he's got other names, but th- that's what no, he's known no. as. He's got <laughs> other names, Mason. All right. He said, I checked out to see how, how Catwoman is treated in the comics to make sure that our Catwoman was in the same vein. But I didn't want to be too influenced by the comic book. Oh. Great choice there. Uh, because the whole point of the movie is to be first a movie and to be different. And it certainly is, wouldn't you say? I mean... In the way that it looks like a cancelled... TV pilot from <laughs> it, the early days. It really 90s. does. But what's interesting is he's gone. We want to do. We want to be completely different. But we're gonna just use Michelle Pfeiffer's version of Catwoman. Like yeah. she's just gonna be like a like a meek, clumsy wallflower again. Who gets murdered again? Who gets murdered again? She gets jokerified. She gets her joker eyed. She has to yeah. swim through a, a sewer pipe. You might be wondering how and I got big, here. Then a, then a cat just does a big hairball in her mouth. I assume. <laughs> no, it was a big breath. All right, fine. it was a big magic cat breath. Mason. No, and then she gets. 
the Daredevil of sorts powers, or the yeah. Spider-Man powers. This, you know, is, this movie the is, zoom in this is oh my god! First of all, there's so many weird crash zooms and like music video, just just weird angles and stuff in motorbike this motorbike riding. But awful. this obvi- this came out shortly after Daredevil, yeah, right? Yeah, and uh, same year as Spider-Man Two. It's all. so yeah. Daredevil. This movie, yeah, isn't it? Just they're like, can we make Daredevil but weirder and hornier? Can we do that? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, and they did. They absolutely did it. And look, I will say this of Halle Berry. Mm-hmm. I love Halle Berry. Yeah. I think she's She'd be great. a great Catwoman, I think. I they made agree. a Catwoman movie about the actual character of Catwoman. I mean, we'll talk a bit about the fallout from this, but look. Razzie I'll, Award winning. Razzie Award That's how it's promoted on the streaming service that I watched it on. It's, it makes sense. I think, like, the physicality, she's obviously got down pat. She learned how to crack a whip. She did a lot of the stunts, not all of them, obviously. It was also said that she might have played Catwoman in Darren Aronofsky's Batman cancelled year one movie, which I think would have been a much better fit. I think they should, shouldn't have called it Batman cancelled year one movie. <laughs> really put a dampener on it. It's probably why it got cancelled, yeah, honestly. Uh, that might have been it. Yeah, but I think she would have been good. She mm. is an Oscar winner after all. And yeah, Sharon, this same year. And Sharon Stone is an Oscar nominee. Mm. Two, 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 uh, two big winners in this. And that French guy was in The Matrix. Oh my sequels. God. It's got the, this movie has the Merovingian. Yep. It has Lois from Family it's Guy. Lois it? Griffin. <laughs> from Family Guy. You know how you know about this? It's got... Uh, Peter Wingfield of Highland of the Series and those weird British Sega ads from the 90s. Who's he? Who's a real doctor now. Did you know that? He became a doctor. For Wingfield cigarettes? Yes! He's promoting Wingfield cigarettes, his own brand of Wingfield cigarettes. (laughs) Wingfield, okay. Yeah, Wingfield. (laughs) Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just bizarre. And look, I guess we could talk about the look that they went for here Mm -hmm. because the costume is actually by Angus Strathy, who did Strictly Ballroom, did Moulin Rouge. In other comic book news, he did a bunch of stuff in Deadpool. Oh, So clearly not without talent. And the first costume she wears with the mask. I think that's the best one. That's probably where you should have stopped this. I mean, look, it's not great. Uh-huh. But it's better than what they end up it with. Is, it's a little bit Birds of Prey, TV series Birds of Prey. Very much but, so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I think, the, I think the final one is like, did you need the cutouts on your butt? Is that, yeah, exactly. That? It's barely a costume. Exposed midriff is not good for fighting crime or doing crime or whatever you're doing in this. It's pre- it's kind of vague. Look, the thing about this movie yeah. is she's not... It's weird that they didn't go... Uh, Selena Kyle is a woman who was raised... You know, she, she she had a rough upbringing in the streets of Gotham City and she becomes the world's greatest cat burglar and it's, you know, it's just a, just a great story of yeah. cool, fun heist stuff and she's coming up against, you know, big hitters of the DC villain world or whatever. And is she a bit like... To be, to yeah. look at that and be like, that's not interesting. I think if we're doing a female superhero story, she should be fighting some sort of cosmetics crime. Yeah, because of women. I get she's, it. Because she's a girl. We should talk about the villains. Yeah, okay. uh, so there's a big fake out because you think the bad guy is the Merovingian. Mm. I mean, never at any point. But the movie kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, is yeah. set up that way, even though we see that it's clearly Sharon Stone. Mm. And they're releasing a face cream to the public really? yes. uh, that a few people have already been trying. And if you put it on, yes. uh, it's fine mm. initially. But if you stop, it like scars your face horribly. But if you if you put but enough of it on, <laughs> you become sort of some sort of marble skin Sparkly super villain. vampire skin. Oh Mason. my god, it's back! <laughs> it's back. We thought we were out, but they've dragged us back in. And that's the way they're able to have uh, them be a match for each other at the end with Sharon Stone and. Catwoman, because Catwoman has cat powers of sorts. Yeah. Sharon Stone is a marble woman. That means everybody who, enough people who who use the cream in the future yes. would also become marble creatures. It's really strange. And also the idea that normally... It's almost like they didn't think this script all the way through <laughs> to its logical conclusion. But if you just went... It's almost like us trying to do that is stupid <laughs> in and of itself. But if you just went, and I guess the Burton universe is, is a little bit fantastical what they did with Catwoman. Mm. But if you traditionally went with the athletic cat burglar person mm. goes up against another athletic person, mm. then that's... It's, I guess you, it is you, just, don't, you don't have to give them both strange powers. No, that's true. You know what I mean? That don't make yeah. any sense. Anyway, she's from a lineage of cat women. Oh, yeah. Uh, the catnip scene's great after she's getting explained. Mm. She does a lot of little cat stuff where, like, she eats, like, nine tins of cat food and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the kind of point where I'm like, she's not literally supposed to be a cat. So I, I don't understand. Like, Batman isn't a bat. 
You know what I mean? Mm. Man bat is a man bat. Man bat is definitely a bat. He's I mean, partially... it's a man bat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bats are actually bats. I did like the scene where uh, she's trying to figure out what's going uh, on, you know, in her mind, in her yeah, body, yeah. and her Karen haircut transformation. Oh, I have written Karen is that haircut the here. Most, that's the most peak Karen haircut I've ever seen. Is yeah, this yeah, the yeah. origin of the Karen I was, haircut? I absolutely think that is, but she pulls it off in because she, she doesn't have the Karen attitude. I, so. That's very true, mm. yeah. Anyway, so the scene where she's trying to work out what's going on, and she Googles cats, women... Uh, <laughs> the cat in history, very good. <laughs> mm. Diabolical cats. Yes. So there's some... uh, I would have typed, um, can cats give you magical powers? <laughs> Question mark. Question mark. And it's interesting because she keeps finding a picture of the cat that gave her cat powers. And she's like, that's the same cat. Sure. Yeah, but cats, like a lot of cats look the same, you know? That would be the conclusion that I would draw. Yeah, but you're a cat racist, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great Point, Mason. Mm. I am a cat racist. Here's a question for you, though. Go on. Do you like basketball, Mason? I love basketball and I love horny basketball. The thing of it is, I again, I think they went... I, I don't know if the time frame gives them enough time to rip off Daredevil, but again, I think they went... We had that fun playground meet cute. Oh, yeah. In, in, in Daredevil, and that got some real-life sparks flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do it again with basketball, but this. Yeah, but this. And it works perfectly, I would say. As far as movie scenes go... People were there on the day and they made it happen. <laughs> That's didn't right, they? yeah. I mean, yeah. they have to have. Otherwise, I mean, how would we be seeing it otherwise? Oh, pure CGI. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe most of it was CGI. I don't know. I don't know. Well, there's a few like little outdoor action It's sequences. not the worst thing in the movie. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I can't off the top of my head think of a worse thing in the movie. <laughs> but I think there is another one. So what did you think about the... Um, the Ferris wheel rescue, I guess, if we're talking daytime action sequences. Mm. Also, what kind of mother lets their child go on a ride by themselves? What was she doing? What's going on there? Yeah, great question. Good thing Benjamin Bratt is a Ferris wheel expert or something. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Ferris wheel base jumper in his spare time. <laughs> he pulls the chute just right before he gets to the surly attendant who isn't paying attention. <laughs> um, are you familiar with uh, graphology? Is it a is it a completely debunked science? There's <laughs> yes. a lot of great science in this. There's there's not only is there handwriting analysis science, yeah. which is not an exact science as they say, in the sense that it's not a science it's at all. It's not a science. But at I all. bet people have gone to jail for it in real life. Oh, definitely. It's like, you know, like craniology was a yeah, thing yeah, where you yeah. can measure people's skulls to determine yeah. how intelligent they were. But not only that, it's, it's bullshit. this movie also has, and and it's the thing that undoes Patience Phillips, it reveals her as Catwoman. Yeah. The, the 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 crime lab of this entirely CGI city also has lip match forensics. <laughs> it does too. <laughs> lip match. You can forensics. just take a photo of a big kissy. Yeah. And compare it to a picture of another kissy. <laughs> it's like and that's a ninety nine point nine percent match. Is that a um? Do you think lips have fingerprints? Lip lip lip. Oh, I don't, great have, a, I don't have a pun for that. Anyway, if you know, I'd love to know. I love her also with just to quickly get back to the graphology. It's mm. like. Oh, this letter says that she's lonely. Or oh, this one says that she doesn't play by the rules. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is nothing. Like this thing that you're doing is nothing. This is this is horoscopes for lab techs, <laughs> I think. Get out of here. Get out of here. You are fired <laughs> if you are applying any of this to, to your actual work. Yeah. Unless you're putting away people we don't like, in which case you're getting a promotion. <laughs> That's right. Um, so at, at the end, they, I mean, the Merovingian is killed, right? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, and it's pinned on the Catwoman. Luckily, mm. she's able to T-1000 both out and presumably back into her cell. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Has the, the T-1000 scene ever been done better? No, not even in Terminator 2. <laughs> That's true. As soon as I watch this, I snap my DVD copy of Terminator <laughs> 2 and a half. Never watching that again. What a waste. But I, I, I have a question for you in terms of, like, Sharon Stone's, like, long-term plan. Okay. What what what's the plan? Let me think. Okay, so it's everybody uses the the product yeah. because it's addictive, but it also works. Yep. And then, well, it, it works in terms of like it gives you a very shiny base app, like yeah. early two thousands filter. But also, sometimes if you use too much of it, you go you no, end up in hospital. Yeah, because it gives you migraines. But it didn't work on. Sharon Stone, she got turned into a, a marble woman. She uh, she took it to the extreme, I guess. She broke through. Right. But if you stop using it, your face melts off. Mm. But at the end, turning people into monsters. Yeah. Oh yuck! Imagine having bad skin. Oh, I can't what a imagine. monster! Ugh, the worst. But even like you know, like what happened to Lois Griffin? Did her face like rot Great off? Great question. Yeah. Right? Well, we we don't because we don't, we don't. There was no Catwoman two. That's right. Maybe she become maybe in Catwoman two she becomes Catwoman universe Two Face. Oh. 
right? Oh, cat face. Because she was only doing one side of her face <laughs> with the with the with the stuff. I love that. I love that idea, mm. Mason. Also, I should point out, like, this is Patience Phillips. Yes, it's not Selena Carl. Yeah. Yes. Boo on that one, I guess. But also, thank you for not doing the other version, I guess. Mm. Not that it matters, really, does it? Because everything's made up and who gives a shit? But I really enjoyed a couple of things at the end. Okay. First of all, the way that Sharon Stone fucking pinwheels out of that window. My God. She does like a hundred cartwheels before she hits the ground. But what I liked about that... Also, she should have st- shattered. If she was made of marble, right? she should have shattered. But didn't she fall into a big... Sh- there, there was glass around her and it looks kind of like that. I don't like that. You know what I did like is that... When she was about to fall to her doom, uh, Patience Phillips, Catwoman, yeah. is like, I'll help you. I'll help you. Puts out her hands to help help her. But, like, you definitely killed a guy early on. Yeah, I yeah, heard yeah. his neck break. Yeah, you did that. <laughs> right? And after, well, yeah. Just let her die as well. What are you doing? And at the end, yeah. Was... She's the worst one. You just killed a security <laughs> guard is what you did. You killed a guy. Yeah. That was the other thing I was going to say because she says at the end, I might not be a hero, but I'm certainly not a killer. Incorrect. Yeah, you are. You're a big killer. Mm. Anyway, it's time for cat twivia. I mean, I have one piece of cat twivia <laughs> sure. uh, just beforehand. You yeah. go into that. It's just or, or, or just a thought. Just a thought I had. Uh, the mask she wears yeah. gives her a really tall head. That doesn't think give about a tall that. Head, yeah, big tall head. Yeah. The, oh, it's a cover the, the Karen haircut. You can't squash down the Karen too, yeah. haircut. Yeah. But like right. that Domino mask initially. Much better. Much better. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't steal, or she does. I don't know. She did, she but put, then she didn't. She put the mask but back because they're like, okay, well, what? What? The, uh, clearly, Pitov was like, well, what? What are we? What's some Catwoman stuff? Oh, she steals jewelry. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Oh what? wait, is that from the comics? Oh, mm. it is. We'll have her putting back jewelry because we already filmed the scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading the comics as I'm making this film. <laughs> anyway, to I continue on with Catwivia. Get get into that Catwivia. A rough cut of the trailer was put online a few months before the film's release and drew such heavy criticism that it was quickly pulled. It was soon replaced with a new trailer, which didn't feature any dialogue. Mm, I remember that, because we saw every movie, basically. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) This movie features both Sharon Stone and Benjamin Bratt. Mm. Bratt was considered by producers for the male lead role in Basic Instinct 2 in 2006. Even more basic. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) But Sharon Stone allegedly vetoed his casting. Because he wasn't basic enough. Well, because she did not consider him to be a good enough actor. Was there a Basic Instinct 2? Yeah, there was. She was in it. She was in it, yeah. It wasn't a directed DVD situation. No, I went to cinemas, yeah. That's mean to be like, no, you were in this terrible movie with me. (laughs) <laughs> and I was terrible in it, but you know what? You were yeah, terrible. Yeah. Um, that, that's going to be how I judge Did she you. not believe the chemistry of super handsome Benjamin Bratt falling in love with his absolute just dormouse Halle Berry? Oh Do you, you remember that? Yeah. Look at her wearing a big sweater. Yuck. God. <laughs> Ugh. Gross. Pre, in a pre-Karen haircut? <laughs> My God. Uh, and the last bit of Catwivia, Halle Berry became one of only six actors in history, only five at the time, to possess both an Oscar and a Razzie. After her win for her infamous performance in the movie, she also became the first to accept their Razzie in person, walking on stage, proudly holding both Oscar and Razzie aloft (laughs) and feigning tears of joy. She gave a short acceptance speech. I'd like to thank Warner Brothers for making me do this god-awful piece of shit movie. But also, like, fuck the Razzies. I mean, we criticise things here on a weekly basis. But the Razzies is just so, like, just fuck you, shut up. (laughs) Fuck everybody at the Razzies. She should have just held up the Oscar and been like, just have a look at yourselves. Mm. All of you. Yeah. Um, anyway, budget, Mason. Okay. This only cost, if you can believe it, $100 million. Whoa. I mean, that's crazy because this doesn't look like... Again, it looks like a TV pilot. It really... It do, It looks so much like, and we've covered it before, the TV series Birds of Prey. Yeah. The, uh, the, the uh, Batman universe TV series with no Batman. It looks it. worse than that Wonder Woman pilot that we also watched and have a video on. Yeah. Was that also cosmetic based? It was, that was a, cosmetic that was, based. That was also like, mm, Wonder Woman should probably fight some beauty related crimes. <laughs> mm, women aren't going to, mm, no. And then she's got to sit on the couch and eat ice cream. Mm. Mm. Oh, check out that video if you could. Somebody could, somebody whoever's editing this can probably oh, do lo- that inflation calculator that's right. thing. Get ready for this. Something depressing. New segment of the show. Oh, no. Just something depressing to end on. Loris, you fight. <laughs> <laughs> this is your last video. But finish it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's wonderful. So, Catwoman was the highest grossing female-led superhero film until the release of Wonder Woman in 2017. Catwoman only made 80 million, so big bomb. Yeah, wow. And that would have killed female-led su- su- well, quote-unquote superhero movies. I mean, there was for, this, for, for and there was decade, like yeah. Electra, and there might have been some others. But they use movies like this and mm. Electra as an excuse to go, "Well, people don't see these." 
Yeah, but this is terrible. <laughs> we didn't yeah. see it and we saw everything. Yeah. Here's some movies that came out in 2004. I'm ready. We saw The Butterfly Effect. Oh, Ashton Kutcher, is he in that? That's right. Whoa, nice. We, we saw the movie Walking Tall. Oh, The Rock's in that. He's got a big 2 by 4 <laughs> He gets out of his truck and they're like, there's no way you'll hit me with that 2 by 4 but he does. I'm going to hit you. Whoa. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Night Watch. We saw Night Watch, Mason. Yeah, oh, my God. Jersey Girl. We saw Jersey Girl. We saw King Arthur. We saw that King Arthur reboot. Which one? <laughs> there's been a hundred King Arthur remakes. We saw The Phantom of the Opera. I think also, um, did Alexander come out that We year? probably also saw some it stuff did. on... DVD or maybe still VHS. Maybe there was some still, co- still stuff coming out on VHS. Exactly. Maybe we saw some stuff on VCD. That's right, that's right. Mm. And people might want to know uh, what's coming up next week, you know what I mean, for the DC uh, the DC bargain bin. Whatever we name this, I can't remember. DC Trashiverse. <laughs> anyway, here's a hint. You do this, there's no turning back. You see them. They see you. What? Cool. Actually looking forward to that one. Absolutely. Me Who too. knew? Who knew? Who knew after this and five weeks of Twilight movies? <laughs> Here's the thing though, like if you've got something you'd like to suggest for the for the DC Bark and Biniverse, whatever the thing is that mm. we're calling it, <laughs> please let us know what you'd like to see. Uh, also, if you'd like to see any of these early, guess what you can? Head over to bigsandwich.co because they got there early every week. And on top of that, we also have bonus podcasts there. We have movie commentaries there. We do a bunch of cool stuff that's exclusive there. It's like our Patreon. Cartwheels. Cat- Catwoman-style cartwheels. <laughs> Sharon Stone-style cartwheels yeah. out a window to our death. Sometimes there's just a video of us and we're on a, we're on a Ferris wheel. We're on a big Ferris wheel. We're having a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> also our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that comes out there Sunday as opposed to Monday. And of course, yes, we have done an episode on The Batman Yes. Which just, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, obviously it's better. But we talk more <laughs> about it, don't we, Mason? I mean, we sure do, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Anyways, I, we don't <laughs> leave it at that. We don't go, hey, everyone, welcome to the show. Anyway, The Batman 2022 is better than the movie Catwoman 2004. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Even though they cost the same. Yeah. Okay, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. Catwoman. Cat got your tongue, Mason. That was a line <laughs> in the movie. Nice. Yeah, she meowed a couple of times. Yeah, she did some meows. 